So I just found these boxes, load of old wooden trunks that were in this barn. Um, this one maybe could be useful. And this one I quite like, just needs a good clean up. But this one is locked and I can't open it. So I'm tempted to just cut it open, try and cut through the lock here with the angle grinder. Sounds kind of crazy and reckless, but there's something in here. I can hear it rattling when I moved it and I really want to know what it is. <laughs> Someone else has clearly tried to prise it open before and no luck. Okay, whether this will work, I have no idea. moment of truth, the moment of probably quite boring truth. What is in here? Oh! Ooh! Some other wooden boxes and some weird documents. Really old ironworks. So inside the chest there are a load of random old pieces of paper. One of them says certificate of birth of William Boy, William Whiteley, 1856. How weird. There's a bunch of other weird things in here as well. What is that? A really mangy bar of soap, perhaps? This is so strange. I was actually expecting it to be nothing in here. Marriage. William Whiteley's marriage to Catherine Brady. Well, at least the box is open. <laughs> wet summer, really wet July this year in England. Um, it's rained nearly every day and it's also been quite cold. It's felt almost like autumn is already here. So it's been kind of getting me down and it's really affected my mood. But I find that it helps so much just to be aware of these things and just to understand why something is happening makes it so much easier to cope because it just takes away that panic about why do I feel this way? Will, will this change? Will I feel like this forever? When you understand what's causing a bad feeling or a low mood, it really just helps you have faith that it's going to end and you're going to feel better again. I was just reminded this morning there was some sunshine and it's dry and a bit nicer today and immediately I feel more positive. So I just have to remember it's not because there's something wrong with me, it's really just because of external <laughs> events which are happening and they're out of my control, there's nothing I can do so I just need to not make it worse by thinking there's a problem that I need to fix. I also think it's partly to do with where I'm at now that I've finished this massive project. Uh, I kind of was preparing myself 
that maybe I would feel a bit lost until I got back into the rhythm of working in here. It really feels like there's a lot of pressure from the modern world to move on fast from any bad feeling, try and just squash it and immediately feel good. For creativity to flow, you really need to feel comfortable and relaxed. And when you're forcing yourself or panicking and stressing yourself out, that is really unhelpful in my experience. I think it can be difficult in today's world to get the space you need to flourish creatively, but often pressuring yourself is the worst thing you can do. I'm much more aware of this kind of thing now um, at this point in my life. A few years ago, I really struggled with that. When you're younger, you don't necessarily have a lot of confidence that your creativity is going to continue. I was always very stressed that while I was having ideas and being creative now, maybe in the future it will stop or, you know, what if I can't keep doing this? But I've really overcome a lot of that actually. Uh, I've become a lot more calm about that. I think it's just knowing yourself better and understanding how you are creative and the conditions that help you have ideas. So I kind of realise now that I can't hurry it. I have to actually just sort of get into the right mindset. And that might not look very productive to other people, but for me, all that downtime is actually creating the ideas that will come out later. These are my old sketchbooks. Um, I haven't been making one recently. They're not really so much sketchbooks, they're kind of notebooks. Everything that I think is interesting, ideas that I'm developing, I put in here. A lot of it is actually written notes. Some of it kind of sounds crazy, but here I've written, the artwork you make is like workings out. The journey, progressions, experience, development is the real result. Works are like shed snake skins, detritus left behind as evidence of your growing. The real value of making art is contained within me, inseparable, inseparable from my being. The works are just the litter. Everything of importance is contained within me. Physical things are just the index markers, reference points. Okay, so I got distracted and I decided that I'm going to put a shelf in my kitchen area. I think I want a shelf along here so I can put all of this stuff on the shelf and not all over the countertop. So I've actually got these brackets that I found in all the farm junk and I thought they would match the pipes so I'm going to try and put them up like this and then put some wood on top as a shelf.
Okay, I'm really pleased with this. I think it looks great. I feel like it finishes off the kitchen area and it's so nice to have the countertop clear and the stuff can go up here. So I brought William Whiteley's various documents that I found in the strong box into the house to have a better look at them. Because I've got his marriage certificate and this birth certificate, I can definitely look in the records and find out a lot more about him and what happened maybe to him and his life. I think that this birth certificate that I found is for the child of William Whiteley. It is dated 1856, which is when their first child, I think, was born. Because here, their marriage certificate says that they were married in 1855. On the birth certificate, it says things like name and maiden name of the mother, so Catherine Brady. It says the profession of the father, which is iron turner. So if he was an iron turner, that would explain why there are these documents from the Gressley Iron Works. And this is all about using a patent chasing lathe to chase screws. So this is when they were making screws basically on a lathe one by one. So the screw, I guess, would be a piece of metal that he would put in the lathe and then cut the screw threads, I imagine. So it sounds like that was his job. One of the other things that is here is this really old, dirty little booklet which says Hume Friendly Burial Society. On the front it's got information about the costs of different funerals and what it basically is, is like a sort of subscription service, I think, where you would pay in money over time and then when you needed to pay funeral or burial costs the society would would pay it for you but what's interesting is in here it's got listed all the people that he registered with this so it has William Whiteley then it says Fred Albert Arthur and Mary Ellen so I think these are his children or some of his children that he's signed up for this service, as well as himself. His wife isn't on there, which makes me wonder if she died by this point. And then the other thing that's kind of interesting is this letter with an envelope. It says, Dr. Graham, um, and it says to Mr. Whiteley, I think it's an invoice from the doctor, uh, because it has the doctor's name printed on and he's filled in Mr. Whiteley and he's filled in the amount. It just says for medical attendance. So at some point, annoyingly the date has been washed away by a stain, but at some point he obviously paid a doctor for some sort of medical assistance. So the thing about these documents is that because I've got his marriage certificate here and also this information like where he was living and his birth certificate I can probably use that to find out quite a bit about him because when you look in records that's the sort of information you need. My dad knows about looking at censuses and things like that he's done it before for our family history so I'm going to ask him if he can find anything out about William Whiteley. I know that he's obviously just some guy who worked in a factory, but I think it's kind of interesting and sort of poignant that he was probably a bit of a nobody. Not important, not rich. He was just a cog in a big machine, the machine of kind of industrial factory living and this stuff is probably all that's left of him. People then were poor and they didn't have a lot of possessions. These were obviously kind of important things to him, the fact that he kept them for so long and 
that they were locked in that box. Who knows how they ended up here, but yeah, I'm going to investigate. It's been quite a strange summer in England. We've had lots of rain and stormy weather. This plum tree snapped in half this week and it had loads of fruit on it. I tried to salvage some, but most of it wasn't ripe. The other tree was doing much better. The colour of these plums when they ripen is so beautiful. found a new kind of mushroom. I'm not sure what it's called. I think the mushrooms are coming very early as the weather feels so autumnal at the moment.
I've been having trouble getting hold of the hardware I need to build my masonry heater. Because the UK has left the EU, it's really difficult to buy things from Europe and I had to accept that I won't get it built in time for this winter. So I got this wood stove second hand and I plan to install it so that I can have some heat in the studio when the weather turns colder. I still really want to build a masonry heater, but it's turning out to be much more of a challenge than I expected. I put some tiles over the concrete base that I poured for it, just temporarily. I haven't cemented them in as I'll move them again when I build the masonry heater. So my dad has found and sent me a few uh, census documents. The censuses were done periodically, so it will tell you over time where the person was living, who else was in their family. So in this one, which was from 1861, there is listed a William Whiteley, and we know it's him because it says his profession is iron turner. Oh, and then it also lists Kate, wife. Oh, they're both aged 30, it says. And it lists Fred, son. Oh, it also lists Sarah Ellen Brady. Si sis oh, sister-in-law, I guess. 28. Does that say dressmaker, her occupation? Okay, so... That's pretty interesting. At age 30, he was living in York Street with his wife and a child called Fred, as well as the sister of his wife. She was living with them. And he was already, well, still an iron turner. She was a dressmaker. The wife, I think it just says at home. So I guess she was just the housewife. So there's another one here um, from 1851, so this is actually earlier. It's quite hard to read because it's got this big red stain all over it. So this is when he was a, a child, I guess? Oh no, he's 20. Okay, so it says William, son, and then above it says Mary, I think? So it's his mother, I guess. She's 39, William is 20, and then... There's another son who is 19, West. It looks like it says West, Whiteley. Um, ah, their professions are Mary Whiteley. It says formerly servant. Then William, who's 20, ah, Turner and Fitter in foundry maybe ah so at 20 he's already a turner a foundry would have been where they were making iron so he's obviously starting out his iron turning career and then west his younger brother i think that says millwright okay so here's another one this one is 1881 so it's a bit later Okay, so he's 50 now. He's 50 years old. He's still an iron turner. In his household is Albert Whiteley, his son, it says, who is 15. Then Mary, his daughter, who is nine. Then, oh, ooh, I think that's it. That's it for his household. So where's his wife? I don't know where his wife has gone. And also the sister-in-law is not there anymore either. So Albert, his profession says something I can't quite read. 
But he, okay, at 15, Albert has already got a job, basically. So I don't know what has happened to Frederick, the other son who was listed in the previous census, but maybe he is now old enough and he's moved out, I'm not sure. Okay, so this next census from 1891 is pretty interesting because all these people are in the same address and the address is the Royal Eye Hospital. So William is here uh, listed as a patient in the Royal Eye Hospital, which means he must have been an inpatient. If he was registered during the census here, it means he was living here. So he was apparently living in the Eye Hospital. He's now 67. It still says his profession is a turner, iron. I think this says widow which means his wife at some point has obviously died. I wonder if that's why she wasn't in the last census in their household. Okay, so I think this is actually pretty fascinating. He obviously ended up in the Royal Eye Hospital, living there. I'm not sure why. I don't know what was wrong with his eye or eyes, but that seems pretty interesting. I, I, I feel like there's quite a lot to go on here to research a bit more. So I could definitely look into the eye hospital and see about the history of that. I'd really be interested to find out what happened to him in the end. I feel a bit worried that as he was an iron turner, his job was cutting screws on a lathe. It does make me worried that maybe he injured his eye somehow doing his job. Um, I'd also really be interested to know what happened to his children, what happened to Frederick, whether he survived and got a job, what happened to Albert, uh, what his job was. Yeah, I'm kind of interested to know what happened to them all. <laughs>